Hello Bombers, in today's video I want to share with you guys different ways and techniques that I do to prepare my body for labor. So let's get to it. But all of these um, techniques or exercises that I do are pretty much safe from the beginning of your pregnancy all the way to the end of your pregnancy if there's no contradictions in you with your pregnancy. So first and foremost, the number one that everybody should be doing is walking. The easiest the most simplest no nothing to think about it is just walking why gravity 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 the more that we are standing up the more it allow it allows our baby to just come down so and walking is just a very easy calm um, exercise that will not put any strain strenuous uh, pressure on your body and it's just an easy Thing for you to do throughout your pregnancy no matter how um, big or small no matter what size you are it's just something no matter what size you are it's just something that you can easily be doing I know in the winter time is a bit different more challenging I, I live in a I live in the winter state so there has been we've been getting a lot of snow for the past two weeks so it makes it really hard for me to get out and walk because there is no way I'm gonna be out in the snow or in the freezing below zero temperatures walking just no way so way to do it is just do it in your house i have a toddler so i just go in circles around the house and try to chase them or walk with him or try to play any activity that allows us to just be walking around the house um, if you have stairs you can also go up and down the stairs my second tip is ball exercises i'm actually sitting on a ball right now you guys can't see but right here and any time that I can it's just especially in the third trimester I'm not gonna lie I was pretty lazy in my first and my second trimester because that's just the way my body during pregnancy just gets very energy depleted um, but in my third trimester I tend to be more active for some reason and even though I am way bigger um, I tend to get other I just tend to be more active so Anytime that I can, now that I'm in my third trimester, I try to just sit on the ball. It is so, so, so beneficial for your body during pregnancy, especially in your third trimester because you're getting closer to that labor date. So if I'm watching TV, if I am reading a book, if I'm doing notes, whatever it is that I'm doing, if I, even if I'm playing with my son, I try to get the ball and just sit on it instead of sitting on a flat surface like your couch or your chair or the floor it will put a lot of pressure on your bottom and it would eventually give you that discomfort on your lower back or that sciatic nerve pain that is just not comfortable i had that sciatic nerve pain throughout my first pregnancy and it was just very uncomfortable at the end of the day thankfully during this pregnancy i've had it occasionally but whenever i just correct my posture and i do some of these um, at ball exercises, it tends to relieve it and I don't tend to have it as often as I did during my first pregnancy. Yeah, but it's always say like I can be doing these videos and just be sitting bouncing. I'm obviously not going to be bouncing here and talking to you guys because it'll be very distracting. And it just allows that your body to give that space and allow that your baby to just fall down with gravity. It's all about gravity in the third trimester. Throughout your entire pregnancy, it's important, but I feel like in your third trimester, it's just way even more important. And if you're already like in your third trimester and you're like, I did not do anything during my first and second trimester, hey, I am with you right there. I was very lazy, um, not gonna lie, but um, you can still do it as long as it's okay with your care provider, that there's no any complications or contradictions during your pregnancy. But you can do it these are very easy techniques instead of sitting on the flat surface you're sitting on a round ball that gives you so much better support um, and it relieves pressure and tension on your bottom so i don't see why it would be contradicting but always make sure with your care provider my number three tip is if you are okay with it and it's okay with your pregnancy seek out chiropractic adjustments i did prenatal chiropractic during my first pregnancy and I, I did it maybe starting into my second trimester um, because I wasn't un I was unaware of it and as soon as I found out there was one in my area I booked myself and I started going to the end of my labor till 
the end of my pregnancy. So this time around, I actually started going before I got pregnant um, because I knew I was going to get pregnant or we were planning to get pregnant and I wanted my body to be at the best position, at the best um, alignment possible and start working with any issues that I was dealing with prior to pregnancy um, before and get that out of the way so by the time that I would get pregnant it would just be focused more on pregnancy issues and it turned out to be like that so that is beneficial for the body and it helps your body being aligned in the best optimal position give that space for your baby to be in the best position possible are probably sitting down the most from either working or the type of job that you have you're either standing a lot or sitting down a lot and um, a lot of the times our postures is in in the best position which allows like your body to just be very misaligned and that can just put a lot of pressure during your pregnancy and give you issues and discomforts throughout your pregnancy that you probably shouldn't be having or that you probably just don't have to deal with and i think chiropractic is just a great 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 additive that you can add if you can some chiropractic facilities are covered by your insurance so you want to make sure that if you do have insurance that you check with your insurance and just like search i we went through maybe like five chiropractic facilities until we got to the one that we go to and when you're looking for a chiropractic you want to look into someone who is doing webster's technique and that is what they call webster's technique is the technique that they use for pregnancy during pregnancy to um and that just means that it doesn't mean that a chiro regular chiropractor doesn't know it just means that they're kind of like a certified or that they attended this uh seminar that allowed that gave them more of insight and more of teaching into pre a pregnancy body and how to align and what to do to help the pregnant mom be at its best optimal position um alignment to allow that baby to come down safely because there are some chiropractors that will say they do treat pregnant women but they're not um they don't practice that technique in specific and there is a difference because I have gone to several ones, like I mentioned, and I noticed a big difference. In my first pregnancy, I had a Webster's Technique chiropractic throughout the entire pregnancy, and her practice was way different to what I am getting now, even though the person that I am going with does practice Webster's Technique. I don't know if it's because she was waiting for me to get into this third trimester. I'm supposed to be going soon. Um, Wait, tomorrow? I'm supposed to be going in two days. There's just one position that I noticed that she's not doing that I noticed that my other chiropractor did all the time. So um, I was actually gonna ask her uh, because I know, I think that position is more leaning towards when you're getting closer to labor. So I don't know if it's a personal chiropractic um, preference thing to do or not, but I just think it's really good. It helps you get your body aligned to this best alignment that it can be and to the proper alignment that it should be so get yourself a chiropractic and do your own research as to why it is good and will, why it would be good for you four is yoga i know this past year everybody we all did the same thing and a lot of the facilities were closed and a lot of places we just don't want to be interacting with people so yoga prenatal yoga was one thing that i did for my first pregnancy and it i feel like it helped a lot it helps a lot with your posture and it helps a lot with your breathing um and it just helps a lot in relaxing yourself and relaxing your mind and body and giving your body that moment to just relax and stretch um there's actually no yoga uh, prenatal yoga nearby my area so i've done some yoga here and there on my own but it's just really good um sometimes when i can't sleep at night i'll get out of bed right now especially in my third trimester because i was fine um, right now during my third trimester i find it hard to go to sleep so i'll get out of the bed and um, just start doing some of these yoga positions and postures poses whatever you want to call them stretches that will um kind of just relax my mind and my body so that it can give me that rest and be able to get back in bed and go to sleep. But yoga has been studied that, you know, it helps the body in so many different ways in and out of, in 
the inside and the outside of your body. So highly recommend. Um, and nowadays you can find yoga all throughout YouTube. So there shouldn't be a, a reason why you have no access to it. There's, I believe it's pregnancy and postpartum TB um, that does uh, prenatal and pregnant, that does pregnancy workouts. And they do mainly like kind of yoga work. If you are interested in wanting to do something like that, um, you can check that out. So that leads to tip number five, I believe, and that is exercise. Exercise is so important during pregnancy. And walking and yoga can be, it's part of the exercise. The only issue and problem with exercise is that if you are not used to doing it before you were pregnant, and all of a sudden you're pregnant and you're wanting to do these excessive um, exercises, then that's when it can become an issue and become compromising to you and your baby. So that's when we shouldn't try to do. We shouldn't try to do like CrossFit when you're pregnant, when you haven't done it in the whole year. Um, things like that. Some of the exercises that are always safe and recommended during pregnancy is walking, swimming, and yoga. Those are the three that I can think of on top of my head that are just very gentle on your body and they won't put a lot of strain on your body. So other than that, if you, whatever exercise that you were doing before your pregnancy, um, you can continue to do it throughout your pregnancy as long as it's safe with your, with, um, during your pregnancy and there's no contradictions in your pregnancy. So you always want to, uh, mention that to your care provider to make sure that it's okay. My last tip, I lost count. My last tip is a massage. Um, I actually haven't been great about getting a massage during this pregnancy because of the whole COVID thing going on. So I think I've only gotten one or two massages throughout my entire pregnancy. In my first pregnancy, I was getting them regularly. Um, and it's just so good because if, especially if you're having a lot of discomfort or a lot of tension in certain parts of your body, a massage would be so beneficial to you. I mean, a massage is beneficial to you before pregnant and after pregnant any time of your life but during pregnancy it's just so much more important i believe so because you have um your body's make and doing a lot of work and making a new baby and you creating a new life inside of you so it takes a lot of you to get that done and i think a massage is just so good and beneficial for you um you can also do acupuncture I haven't done it in this pregnancy, but I did do it in my first pregnancy, um, in my first trimester only, for nausea and vomiting and headaches that I was dealing with. Um, I didn't get to do that this uh, pregnancy, but um, I'm actually looking into seeing if I should get acupressure or acupuncture, acupuncture um, as I get closer to my delivery date. Um, just to see if, I mean, what it, I mean, if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt. But I think I was reading on it and I think it's um, for certain to help your body get into that labor state, then it's recommended to do it after 37 weeks. But I'm not too sure on it because I just barely, I was barely reading on it. Um, but there are some pressure points that are recommended for you to apply pressure for that will put you into labor or help you get into labor. But that, because like I said, that's not recommended until you're further into your third trimester, closer weeks, closer to your labor day. Um, and I was just waiting to go to my next visit with my uh, midwife to make sure that um, when it's okay for me to get it, because I haven't asked that. And, and yeah, um, as far as the massage goes, you can either get a regular massage or a prenatal massage. When you go to a regular uh, regular massage therapist who does regular massages, who doesn't have a specialized specialization with pregnant women, you will notice that it's going to be the same. They're going to do exactly the same technique and everything. They might not even consider you to get on the side, depending on unless you're really obvious like me with this big belly. Um, you they might just keep you to lay on your back and to me the laying on my back has always been comfortable but um to some people it might not be there are certain pressure points that it's not recommended for people to put pressure on you when you're pregnant Maybe like it can put you into labor or just there's just not points recommended to uh, put pressure on during your pregnancy the prenatal massage therapist focuses on a pregnant woman so they tend to know more 
where your pain or your discomfort comes from and they know like okay what areas usually they tend to be and they know how to work that area and they will more than likely will put you on the side they'll put like a little more therapy um and i feel like in a way they're more gentle and at the same time if you need more pressure they know which areas tend to be the areas that you need more pressure because sometimes <laughs> some therapists think that because you're pregnant you need to be extra gentle with them and for me personally that's not the case i need that extra pressure especially when i'm pregnant i need that extra more pressure to find that relief um but yeah so i think that's it those are all my tips uh for you guys for today and i hope that um these were useful and helpful for you guys um and let me know if you practice any of these um, tips and if there's anything that you want to share with me and everybody else just leave it down in the comments down below give this video a like and i'll see you mamas on the next video bye